Welcome to A Magical Life, Health, Wealth and Weight Loss. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, Lead Practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia and number one best-selling author. In this podcast, I aim to give you practical tips on how to accelerate and sustain your health, increase your financial, spiritual and emotional wealth and to look at something that haunts many of us needlessly, weight loss. In some episodes, I'll have guests available to give you even more tips, but in others, the floor is yours. Drop us a line at A Magical Life Podcast on Facebook and let me know what you would like to know more about. Now, sit back and enjoy, because it is time for you to create and truly discover a magical life. Welcome back to A Magical Life. I'm your host, Magic Barclay, and today we're talking about wealth. Now, we often cover wealth as a question with our guests, but today I want to look with you in depth about the different levels of wealth and why people get stuck in a a wealth rut, for want of a better word. We've all heard the expressions, like money doesn't grow on trees, you have to work for your money, you have to work hard, money is blood, sweat and tears. There's a whole lot of sayings out there. And really there's someone else's money story being passed on to you in a little nutshell called a quote. Sometimes we believe it, sometimes we can break free of it. But what we find is as we grow Our personal money story is often not our own. We love hearing these stories of, you know, business people and entrepreneurs breaking free. Their parents were dirt poor. They had nothing. They never had their own new clothes and they decided to change that. How did they do that? They changed their money story. Now, there are five levels of wealth. The first is financial poverty. Many of us find ourselves in financial poverty. And what does that look like? Well, we spend money on limited lifestyle items. We live for today. We know we've got enough for the groceries, the power, the electricity, gas, water, phone bills, things like that. We might have a little luxury like cable TV, but financial poverty is one of those places where People often find themselves stuck. Debt is taken on for instant gratification. So things that you don't have the cash for today, you think I'll be able to pay it off tomorrow and at the financial poverty level, that's quite a common occurrence. There isn't much financial education at this level. Maybe someone at this level doesn't want to know how to break free of it. These people are not risk takers. They're not going to invest. They're not going to risk anything, apart from maybe a tax lotto ticket. Their assets, well, there's very little. In fact, sometimes they can be going back into debt, basically, with consumer debt. There's very little to no residual income at this level. Now, the next level is financial stability. These people, they spend their money on limited lifestyle items while they're saving for a rainy day, but they're not investing. They're scared of debt. They want zero debt. They really want to pay off their own home if they have one. Limited financial education. They really prefer the security of saving. They dislike risk and love security. There might be some cash and term deposits in their assets, but not a lot. The residual income, nearly zero. All income is taxable. Now, I'm not telling you that either of these levels are bad. In fact, I've been there myself. They are not bad at all. That is often where we find ourselves stuck because of someone else's money story. Now, the next level is financial security. These people spend their money on limited lifestyle products, and limited investments. They take debt, but they see it as a necessary evil to purchase some investments. 
They might have a little bit of an understanding of the rules of money and they get advice from family, friends, financial advisors. That's their education level with finance. Risk, well, they'll take some comfortable, safe risks that their friends might all be doing. Some assets will be blue chip shares, maybe one or two investment properties. And they they think they've broken free with those. Their residual income, they might get a small amount of dividends or rental income from their properties. The next level up is financial independence. They spend their money on lifestyle and high growth investments. They realise that debt is leverage that is needed to grow their asset base. They understand the rules of money and take responsibility for growing their portfolios. They take calculated risks based on proven long-term strategies. They have assets, quality assets, such as well-located properties, and they buy and hold shares. They have residual income, money is working for them, and they create a sufficient income to sustain their basic lifestyle without having to work. Sounds a bit like a dream to someone who might be in financial poverty or financial stability. Now, the highest level of wealth is financial freedom. These people spend their money on their ideal lifestyle and high growth strategic investments. They love debt because they know how to balance their debt. They have financial education and are always looking at learning more. They understand risks and they have plans in place to handle risks. They have numerous quality assets which have compounded and grown over time. Residual income, money really works for these people and they can afford their ideal lifestyle indefinitely without ever having to work again. Now, why am I telling you these levels? Simple. If you are stuck in some of the bottom levels, you're never going to see that the higher levels are easily attainable or achievable. And why? Because your money story will govern how you feel. You might not feel that it's safe to be wealthy. You might not think you are enough, that you don't have enough knowledge, enough time, enough capability to grow your wealth and and your diversity. But you do. It all comes down to your money story. And that is what today is about. So previously in episodes, I've discussed with some of my guests about the values track. Now you might be thinking, what does the values track, my values, my beliefs have to do with my wealth? Well, here it is. So the T of track is what do you love to talk about? Now this is a bit of a homework exercise here for you. If you don't love to talk about what you see for your future, your wealth will not be geared to get you there. The R, what do you love to research? If you don't love to research ways to make money, if you don't love to research the dividends you can get from investing, if you don't love to research what your life, your ideal lifestyle looks like, feels like, sounds like, what it costs, where it is, then you're not putting all your energy into achieving it. The A in the values track is abilities. If you do not learn about investing, if you do not learn about how to grow your finances, You are lowering your abilities. You are lowering your abilities to get your ideal lifestyle. Now, the C is contemplate. If you don't dream and contemplate exactly what you want, it will never happen. And the K is what do you know a lot about? You know a lot about you. You know a lot about what you're capable of. You should know a lot about your ideal lifestyle. If you want to live at a certain place, you should know a lot about that certain place. So the values track can be geared 
to help you get to where you want to be. Now, there's a saying that money is time or time is money. And to an extent, yes, that's true. So what you can do is write yourself a list, starting with being wealthy gives me more time because. And in this list, you link wealth to having more time. So being wealthy gives me more time because I will have the ability to spend more time in the garden. I will be able to play with the grandkids. I will be able to help my kids more. Being wealthy gives me more time because I will be happy so I will be feeling well. My health will be unlimited. This list can go on forever and that's something that you kind of need to spend a fair bit of time doing, doing this link up between money and time. You need to set a vision for your wealth as well. And this is where we're coming up to writing our money story. So you need to be able to set the scene. Like in any story that you read, you need to be able to set the scene. You have the actors, the players. Now you're one of them. Your family might be another. Friends might be other players in this scene. You have the place that it is. You have the place that it is. Where is this taking place? What is your ideal place for your money story? You have the things that you are going to be doing. What are you going to be doing in your money story? So we've got the people, we've got the place. We've got maybe some things that you're going to be doing in your money story. We need to now have how it makes you feel. Now, we've looked at the values track before, as I said. So what are your deepest values? What are your golden values? But also what are your shadow values? And we have discussed those. What are the things that may stop you from getting your money story happening, making it a reality? And where we need to look at here is things like the superiority, for example, which comes in with the I'm not good enough, I don't know enough. So you need to nip that in the bud and really go, how do I make my superiority count in a positive way for my money story? Maybe you're going to know the most about model trains and buy and sell or drop ship model trains around the world and that's how you're going to help build your wealth and that could be built into your money story because you could be working from home or working from the beach or off grid or wherever dealing with miniature trains because that's important to you and that makes you superior so we need to really look at all these things but we also need to look at how we feel about ourselves, about money, about the place that we're going to be. This story has to be really emotive. And how it might look to you is this. It's now January 2023 and I am retired, but I work for myself still from home when I want to. My home is a two-story that overlooks the beach, but it's a quiet beach, so there's very few people. I start my day by slipping on some clothes, grabbing my water bottle and walking along the secluded beach. I can feel the sand between my toes. It's golden sand. It's quite warm, but it's still cooling once the water hits it. The water is crystal clear. There's a few small waves breaking along the beach. There's a little bit of seaweed. My foot touches it and it feels a bit funny. I sit my water bottle and I walk along the coastline. As I head back to my home, I look up at it and I think there's two stories of a house that my wealth has built for me, that my 
appreciation for myself is built for me. As I walk back into the gates of the home, I open the iron gate. It squeaks a little. I close the gate behind me and my grandkids come running up. They throw their arms around my legs because they're little. And as I bend down, I say, I need to do a bit of work. I go and I do 10 minutes worth of work. And then I spend the day with my grandkids. We play in the pool. We have some lunch. And at the end of the day, I'm proud of myself. I can feel that warmth, that gratitude through my body. I really appreciate what I've given to myself. And at the end of the day, I sit on the veranda. I can smell the jasmine blooming. I can smell a barbecue. Someone's having a barbecue on the beach. The sun's setting and I can feel the warmth on my face. I mix a drink and I sit there on my creaky wooden chair, knowing it's all mine. I have it. I did it. I made it. I earned it. I'm worth it. Now, you could stretch that story out a long way. That's just an example. But it's a motive. It's how you're feeling about the beach house. Something important in there might be your grandkids. It might be the jasmine in the garden. It might be the barbecue on the beach. Some of these things are going to trigger emotions, positive, happy, affirming, loving emotions. You're going to put yourself in your money story, feeling everything, seeing everything, smelling everything. And you can really, as I said, stretch this story out so that it encompasses everything. Now, how long should a money story be? There's no limit. There's absolutely no limit to your money story. It's your story. It doesn't matter if it's one page, five pages, ten pages. In fact, you should go back to it and keep adding to it as you think of things. And you should read it to yourself every single night before you go to bed because it will make this real in your mind and your values track will link up to make it happen. That is how people get from financial poverty to financial freedom. Those entrepreneurs that we see, those seemingly overnight successes, they had a money story. Now, I've recently been watching uh, Wall Street with Mark Wahlberg in it. Like him, don't like him, whatever, I don't care. The simple story behind Mark Wahlberg is that he was the youngest of nine kids. They were a poor family. They did not have much. The parents scrimped and saved for everything Mark himself never had a new pair of shoes as a child. So what do we see later in his life when he's financially independent, financially free, doesn't have to keep working in his early 40s, but he does because he's doing what he loves. What is one of the businesses he takes on? Shoes. Another one, shirts. Another one, restaurants. Another one, gyms. Another one, gym supplements. Things that mean something to him, either he didn't have them growing up and he made his money story include them or they're things that help him now. And we've all heard he works out at 2.30 in the morning or some ridiculous time. Of course, it makes sense that he buys a gym franchising company. None of this has happened by accident for him. He's worked for it. He set out his money story. He said, this is what I want for my future and I'm going to get it. I'm going to make it happen. He's managed to put all his shadow values in place so that they're working for him. His golden values, a family is one of them. So he's very close and bonded with his own children. 
In fact, he encourages them to start businesses from home. He encourages them to grow their own money story. Like I said, love him, hate him, I don't care. But he's a perfect example of someone who's gone from long-term financial poverty, hearing other people's money stories, to financial freedom by creating his own. There's a lot of people in the world that have done this. A lot of the big name speakers, the so-called gurus out there, they've done it too. A lot of them have come from nothing. Some of them quite late in life. They've turned it around where they've been in financial poverty into their their 40s or 50s. And then they've changed the money story they're telling themselves. And they've turned it around and now we look at them and we think, how did they get there? I wish that could happen to me. Well, guess what? It can. It can happen to all of us. And the purpose behind this episode today is to let you know that we talk about wealth here for a reason. Everybody deserves wealth. Everybody can have wealth. Anybody can change their wealth level, but you can't do it without changing your money story. If you are going to say in your mind, well, that's good, but money doesn't grow on trees, that's a very negative start to a money story. And so money won't grow on trees. You're right. But you also won't work for it. You won't make it happen. You won't invite it into your life. You won't ask your life to change so that you can have what you want. Saying things like, well, that's nice for her, but I'm never going to have that. Or, oh, isn't she lucky? That just fell into her lap. Maybe. But why? Because her money story was different. So I'm asking you listeners today to create your own money story. We would love for you to jump onto our Facebook page. Send us a message with your money story. We would love to hear it. We'd love to share it with the other listeners. Go to www.facebook.com slash a magical life podcast. Share us your money story. Inspire those of us who need to still write one. Join the community of those of us who have written one and continue to adjust it and maintain it and change it and live it and aspire to it. Work as a community and change your money story. Now, that was just a short episode for you today. Coming up in episodes 59 and 60, we have Inga Truscott, talking all things essential oils. Now, 59, we're talking essential oils for household use, and in 60, essential oils for health. Essential oils are amazing to use. They are healthy to use. They are cost-effective to use, and so they could easily fit into your money story for you. So that's coming up. Episode 59 is Inga Truscott talking about essential oils for household use. I hope today that you've learned a bit about your money story and how to change your wealth level. Again, I invite you to share your money story on our Facebook page. We would love to interact with you and help you really build that for yourself. For now, go forth and create your magical life. Thanks for listening today. Please subscribe to hear future episodes, leave a review and share this podcast. You can follow us on Facebook at A Magical Life Podcast or at Holistic Natural Health Australia. That's holistic with a W. You can find us on Instagram at Holistic Natural Health or at www.holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. That's where you'll access all sorts of articles, freebies and more.